A great teacher is someone who is always learning. Um, a great teacher is someone who listens very carefully to their students to inform their instruction. A great teacher builds relationships with students, connects with students, and is a learner with the students. And the student sees them make mistakes and the student sees them get frustrated and persevere and models all of the, the habits that a learner does. And what I love about the Common Core in math, particularly the mathematical practices, and so for me, I feel like they have, um, they have just um, unleashed this new excitement around teaching when I'm really starting to think about not just students mastering skills, but mastering ways of thinking and thinking about how do I measure kids ability to use models and make sense and critique the reasoning of others. All right, so we have two answers. These answers are quite different from one another. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try to make sense of this. Um, is there somebody who'd be willing to share their thinking about how they got one and a half or how they got six? You can think of one half as two and then do three divided by two is going to be one and one half. Oh, so you're saying that one half is equal to two? Sometimes. Sometimes? Okay. And so you could do three divided by two would be one and one half? Okay. Let's hear from another. I don't think it's one and one half. I don't know what the answer is, but I don't think it's one and one half because three times one half equals one and one half, and we're dividing. Interesting. So let me get a different color here. So you are saying that three times one half equals one and one half. Yes. Okay. Turn and talk to your partner. What do you think about this statement? Does this is this true? Turn and talk. We're, we're dividing and not multiplying. Three times one half is true because one half three times is... Another piece I feel like the Common Core is also so important is I feel like if done well and we are really thoughtful about how we implement it and how we take time that it's not going to happen overnight, I think we're actually going to bring a huge love and joy of teaching math and learning math. And it's already happening in my classroom. It's amazing how just a shift of putting the learning and the accountability of the learning on the kids, how much more invested they are in figuring it out. I remember that division means groups of. So they're trying to find um, how many halves are in three, and that's six. So that, that whole moment of dissonance and disequilibrium around three divided by one half, which took 10, 15 minutes, was so great in hearing so many kids um, share their thinking and try to prove their um, their idea and their answer with evidence. So the answer is six. We already did that. It has to be six. It has to be six. Two times each one. If you do two times three, that's going to give you six. That's going to be six because, because it's two, like four six. Because two 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 um one half equals one whole. So how many how many halves go into three? Six of them. So six is going to be the answer. Four six. I'm excited for those two big reasons. One, as a country and as a society, we need to be much stronger in math and technology than we are. And then also just to bring the love and joy of math back. So we don't have people saying, I, I'm not a math person. I don't do math. Math's not my thing. So we need to change that.